Good evening, Syracuse, and welcome to the March 26th edition of SA Today. I'm Jake Reiner. A busy show today as we are joined by the Vice Chair of Academic Affairs, Ben Jones, and of course, by SA President Dylan Lustig. Let's first kick off with your campus headlines. Right now in the Goldstein Auditorium, Syracuse is honoring select students, faculty, staff, and community partners with the 2012 Chancellor's Award for Public Engagement and Scholarship. This award is for those who demonstrate SU's commitment to helping the community and involvement with this Scholarship in Action program. Tonight, women journalists will highlight the challenges and opportunities of reporting the news in the digital age. The symposium will be a panel discussion for the Robert Robin Toner Program in Political Reporting. Also, the event is awarding the $5,000 Toner Prize for Excellence in Political Reporting to Jane Mayer of The New Yorker. It starts at 7.30 tonight. You can follow the event on Twitter with the hashtag TonerPrize and will be webcast at tonerprogram.syr.edu. The University Lecture Series continues Thursday with writer Terry Tempest Williams. She will, be, she will be presenting The Writer as Witness at 7.30 in Hendricks Chapel. Williams is a citizen writer who has an ethical stance toward life. Williams also enjoys speaking on how environmental issues are social issues that become matters of justice. The event is free and open to the public. Yesterday, University Union announced the musical acts who are performing at Mayfest this year. Maybe you can tell me who these groups are. AER, Five and Dime, and Time Flies will all perform, while Out of Sight headlines the concerts in Walnut Park. Out of Sight's Tonight is the Night has been on the Billboard Hot 100 chart for 17 weeks. Who knew? Mayfest is on April 27th, and the acts for Block Party, which is later that night, have yet to be revealed. Syracuse University has been named to the President's Higher Education Community Service Honor Roll with distinction. SU is one of only eight institutions in New York State to be named to the Honor Roll. The distinction recognizes colleges and universities that support innovative and effective community service. More than 10,000 students and 500 faculty members were involved with community engagement in the 2010-2011 academic year. It is the sixth straight year SU has been named to the Honor Roll. Well, I hope you enjoyed those headlines, hard to top, but Student Association President Dylan Lustig has his work cut out for him with his campus weekly address. Dylan? Great. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Citrus TV, for having me on another session of SA Today. Um, just a couple things to talk about today. I know it's, uh, it's a tough week. Uh, we had our, our basketball team lose, and, and it's a little bit of a uh, shift change in weather, so um, wear your coats again. It's unfortunate, but it happens. Um, now. I know that it's kind of upsetting what you use, you use bring, no one really knows the bands, but it's going to be good. I know, I know it's going to be good. Um, now, SA has had their budget hearings um, for the last couple of days, and we have decided who we're giving money to. So at the meeting on April 9th in Maxwell, actually in Life Sciences build, Building, room 100, please come to see what your student fee money is going toward. It's really important that you know where your money is going, okay? Second thing, at the meeting tonight, 7.30, Maxwell Auditorium, we'll be talking a little bit about philanthropy and where tuition dollar goes. Thank you. Thanks, Dylan. We'll hear more from you later on, but first, after the break, we take a look at the tragedy that struck campus on Friday. Stay tuned. In 1977, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. The odds of that same boy then making it to the U.S. and European pro golf tours one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the US Open twice, one in 1.2 billion. The odds of him having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. Ernie Els encourages you to learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. We are different. Society should aspire to be more like us. Be part of the first class. Get energized. Get outside. Hold on, guys. It's gonna get bumpy. And get moving. Experience the power of physical activity. Woo! <laughs> Join the movement at ActionHeroAlliance.com. Last Friday, news broke about freshman Courtney Nash being found dead in her Del Plain dorm room. 
Citrus TV's Jose Moreno brings us that story tonight. Tragedy strikes the Syracuse University community as first-year student Courtney Nash was found dead in her dorm room at Del Plain Hall. Nash was an economics major and native of Virginia. Police found her body this afternoon. Officers are still investigating, but in a press conference, Sergeant Tom Canellan confirmed that there was, in fact, a student found dead at Del Plain Hall. Uh, we have, in fact, found a student uh, upstairs. Uh, we do not, at this time, have a cause of death. We do not believe that uh, this is criminal in nature. DPS safety Tom Calisto expresses condolences to the family and reiterates that students shouldn't feel concerned about their safety. You know, this certainly is a very uh, tragic uh, incident for the university community, and our hearts go out to, uh, uh, to the, to the uh, families. And uh, certainly uh, in this particular case, um, you know, we will provide any further information that we can um, as soon as we get it. Uh, we're going to work very closely with the Syracuse Police Department. Um, again, there's uh, really no, no concern relative to public safety at this point, uh, and uh, we'll be providing information as it becomes available. Following the conference, Syracuse University Chancellor Nancy Cantor sent an email out to students expressing her deepest sympathy to the family and Syracuse University community. I am profoundly saddened to inform you of the loss of Syracuse University student Courtney Nash, who passed away unexpectedly earlier today. Our hearts are with Courtney's family, friends, near and far, and all members of the SU community whose lives she touched. After the news broke, there was a sense of disbelief among the students. I was just really surprised and didn't really believe it. I didn't believe it at first because there's always like rumors, so I thought it was just like something that someone else had said. It's really upsetting that it was an SU student. Um, you know, the RA is supposed to watch over all the residents in the residence halls. So I don't know if it could have been prevented, but it's always a tragedy whenever someone dies. This isn't the first time a student has died at Del Plain Hall. In March of 2008, a male freshman student was found dead in his dorm room from an apparent suicide. Syracuse police and DPS are continuing their investigation. Sergeant Canella asserts that it doesn't appear to be a crime. Jose Moreno, Citrus TV News. First of all, I'd like to thank Jose for turning that package around so quickly for us. And now we bring in SA President Dylan Lustig. And after listening to that report, um, obviously knowing about this a little bit before everyone else did, being the president, what was your reaction when you, when you heard about Courtney's death? I think, you know, when things like this happen, there's always that sense of initial disbelief. Um, you know, you, you do like to think of this place as a safe place and, you know, things can never go wrong, um, but they do, um, and it's, it's a tragedy. And the hearts of, of hopefully every student are with the families, with the friends of Courtney Nash, and, you know, all we can do is, is remember that we have a lot of really useful services here at Syracuse University. There is, you know, there are advocacy, advocacy centers, um, counseling centers, and um, it, it's important to keep that in mind. So it's, it's a very sad time, and, and we need to, we need to, Definitely remember to take some moments of silence for Courtney. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much for that, Dylan. Um, if we can respectfully shift gears, um, SA is starting a new program called Hashtag SA Help. Now, I'm assuming that's involving Twitter. Can you explain to us a little bit about what Hashtag SA Help is? Right. So, uh, you know, I'm not a huge technologically advanced guy. Um, I definitely need some help on the technology side of things. Um, but we have had... Uh, our director of technology working on you know Twitter and how we can advance ourselves in the social media world um, and one of his great ideas was hashtag SA help um, we've had it around for a couple months now and um, we're starting to see some some you know increases in its usage but it's it's a hashtag so you know say you're walking down the street and uh, you think someone's speeding on Comstock and, and almost hit you when you were walking in in the, uh, the you know the, the walking zone I guess across the street say Tweet to SA, say, you know, this, this road needs to be watched more carefully by DPS, hashtag SA help. Or the food in Ernie isn't good enough, hashtag SA help, something like that, and, and we'll look into it. Well, that's a great way to get Syracuse students involved with SA. Thank you very much, Absolutely. Dylan. Thanks, Jake. Still plenty more to come here on SA Today. Vice Chair of Academic Affairs Ben Jones will be here to let us know about how students can be directly involved in determining academic policies. Stay right there. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. 
You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. The Vice Chair of Academic Affairs, Ben Jones, joins us now on Essay Today. Ben, a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So we're talking about academic integrity, and I know that the policy is still intact, but what, can, what do you think can be improved with that um, policy, the academic integrity? What, what can be improved? Well, um, it's important for students to know um, that they can be involved in the process. Um, it's really, it's not, a, it's not a student issue, it's not a faculty issue, it's the issue of the university. And I think it's very important to know that everyone has a role in it, even the students. Okay, and so you, you were talking to me earlier about how valuable that involvement is. What can a student bring to affecting a university policy, something that affects Syracuse University? What can a, a student's mindset bring to that policy? Well, students have unique experiences uh, regarding the university that the faculty really don't because they're not the ones in the classes. Um, as far as academic integrity goes, um, students, when in uh, leadership roles in academic integrity hearings, um, actually cause a decrease in campus-wide um, academic integrity violations. Students are harsher judges of other students. We know all the excuses students use. We know all the stories. And we don't like being lied to. So in a lot of cases, we're a lot tougher than what faculty would be. Okay. And so students are definitely more interested in being involved, but how can they get involved? What, what's the route to getting their voice heard? Well, the first step is to contact the Academic Integrity Office. Um, the Academic Integrity Director is a huge fan of student involvement, um, so he will be, he's very open to any student uh, uh, involvement, very much so. Okay, and uh, th thank you very much, Ben. Uh, that's all the time we have. On Essay Today, we'd like to thank Ben, of course, and Dylan for joining us. And if you want to attend the essay meeting, it is tonight at 7 in Maxwell Auditorium. For the latest news, go to CitrusTV.net or follow us on Twitter at CitrusTV. Citrus TV News returns tomorrow, and Essay Today returns next Monday. Have a gorgeous evening, Syracuse.